What is up? Joshua Casper here with another Ableton Live video tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how to make um, a couple of preset effects racks for customizable bandpass filters. I've kind of covered this before but lately as I've been producing I've been finding myself using this technique more and more and I figured why not share it with you guys because it's just so useful. What we're going to be doing is making a four band pass filter using the audio effects rack we're going to have each band on a separate channel inside of the effects rack so we can add effects to each channel um, to affect each band um, I don't know if that makes any sense but I'm going to show you right now how it's done uh, it's very useful for side chaining bass and only side chaining the sub end of the bass but not the mids and the highs of it I'm going to leave a link to the uh, the older tutorial that uses this. But what we're going to do today is make some templates to have a two band, a three band, and a four band. And we're going to go ahead and save those so they're just ready for whenever we're going to use them. So first thing we're going to do is come into Audio Effects and take the Audio Effects Rack and drop it on the channel. And this is just a track I've got coming out just so we can um, get some some feel of what's going on. This is the track. Two Kajis are mashed with laughter Coming at you with Joshua Casper We the masters doing it faster Blend it with the sound till your ears get pampered So um, what I'm going to do now is just take an EQ8 and drop it on here And then take a second EQ8 and drop it on here And this is going to be our two band pass filter um, preset So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this right here and I'm just going to take number two and bring it on the four times drop off right here and then I'm going to take that frequency right click and map to macro one oops and I'm going to, I want to do that on the top one just to keep things uh, organized so I'm going to say band one as the title here and now when I change this you can see that it moves up and down and that's great it's exactly what we want the next thing I'm going to do is come into the one here and change that to the four times drop off right here. And I'm going to take the frequency map to macro one as well. And now you can see that as I move this to the right, this band moves to the right as well. And we're not going to lose any frequency there. Um, so that works out rather well. And I'm going to rename this band two. And what we can do now, for example, is if I wanted to side chain uh, the subby end of a bass uh, sample or something like that, or a bass group, and I only wanted to duck the side end and I wanted to keep the kind of mid range bass not ducked, I would just pull this band down to about, you know, 70 hertz or something, and then I would drop a compressor on just this first band, and then I would side chain it to whatever I was going to side chain it to. And then that way, only the the audio coming through this band is going to be side chained, and all the audio here in this part of the band will not be side chained. And this could be um, effective for a number of reasons. Maybe you want to do stereo width at the um, the higher end of the spectrum. You could just pull this over to about here, to about 4.1 kilohertz, and then you can just add a stereo width to it if you want. Maybe by adding a utility to it and then pulling up the width just a little bit just to get a little bit of a breathy stereo width to that just that high end but then leave this this end alone I um, mean yeah, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with what uh, the functions of a bandpass filter but this is just setting it up inside of live to keep it down so what I'm gonna do is rename this audio effects rack is called uh, JC two band filter okay and I'm just going to hit this and then I'm going to go ahead and save it as that. Perfect. And now what I'm going to do is add a third band to it. So I'm going to come into my audio effects again and come up to the EQ8, drop that right on here. And what I'm going to do now is come into the second band and on, we can use any one of these. I mean, we can even shut off two and three and just use four if we wanted. Um, and then take the frequency and add that to macro two. Okay, and it automatically shoots it over to the lowest value. So what we want to do is just pull it over like this. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is come into chain three and do the same thing with the first cutoff here and map that to macro two as well. And now, as you can see, this is kind of a mid-range filter here. And now we have a high-range filter here. And I'm going to rename that 
band three. Okay, and oop, low pass, and we can name this mid range. I should have done this for the other one, but uh, that's okay. And this is the mid to high range. So maybe we could go mid high. Let's see if it fits. Cool. So now here is band three is the high, band two is the mid, and band one is the low. We can even rename these low, mid, and rename high. So that's pretty cool. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this three band filter. Sweet. Save it. Three band filter. And I'm going to add a fourth band just so we can be sure that we can have full uh, accessibility to the bands. Most professional mass mixing and mastering plugins like Isotope, 4, uh, Isotope 5, for example, have f up to four bands. So I think if we make up to four bands, we'll be good. But obviously, you can just repeat this process if you need to um, add another band for some reason. Um, and the next thing I want to do is the same thing I did before here, and I'm going to map the frequency for that to macro 3. And I'm going to come in here and take this fourth one again, knock it down, and map the frequency to macro 3. And again, it puts it to the lowest thing. So here we go. Um, now if I come up to high, this is the absolute highest. This is mid 2. This is mid 1. And this is mid 3. So if I come in and just rename this again, mid mid one and mid two and mid two high pass. Okay? So that's pretty sweet now. And if I could come in here and just rename this high again. Rename this mid one. Rename this mid two. And now, if I play this and shut this off, the audio should not be changed because I haven't affected anything. I've just set up my bandpass filters, so everything should sound the same. Let's see if that's the case. Like two hotties a mash with laughter, coming at you with Joshua Casper. We the masters doing it faster, blended with the sound till your ears get pampered. Like two hotties. Okay, and as you can see, it actually does affect the sound a little bit because um, there's a little bit of crossover between these, uh, between this uh, times four curve right here and this times four curve. It's actually a little bit of crossover, so we're actually getting a little bit of audio boosting. And you could come in and maybe pull down the gain. Um, you could put a uh, limiter on the end of it and then regroup it. There's a, there are many ways to get around that sort of audio boost, but the audio doesn't really change that much. And I think with what we're going to be using this for in the future, it won't be for a whole track unless you're trying to master with it, which you can. Um, I think that's the least of our problems, that little bit of audio boost right there. So uh, what we could do now, like I said before, if we... Oh, we should want to save this first. Four band filter. Cool. Save four band filter. And now we have those presets ready to go for whenever we're going to be needing something a two band, three band, or four band filter. Uh, for example, what we could do is the side chain compression on the, uh, the, the absolute low end here. Um, high end in mid range, we could do a little bit of audio width, maybe just 120 here, and maybe 114, 110 here. The low end, uh, the subby end, we can take the utility and put that on there and actually bring the width way down. Um, if we're going to be using it for sub, sub for real, for real, um, let's get rid of this. We can pull it down to, you know, 70 hertz or something and then pull the sub all the way down to zero zero and on this one we can you know kinda decrease the width just a tad 
Like two counties and mash with laughter Coming at you with Joshua Casper We the masters doing it faster Blend it with the sound till your ears get pampered Cool, I mean that's just gonna That's just an idea of something you might want to use this for Obviously there are so many different use, uh, uses for this And um, now that we have those three ready to go We'll never have to repeat that process And uh, life is good Anyway, I hope that helped you guys. I'm going to throw the pack up online, obviously, like I always do. If you want to just go ahead and download it. But obviously, following along, you'll learn a lot more. Anyway, we, uh, we will see you next time. Peace.